Goblin launch detected. Uh-oh. Hey gang, using the promo code MTGMUDSTA, one word, all caps, will get you 10% off orders of $10 or more at Flipside Gaming, Original Magic Cart, and orders of singles at Multizone. If they don't have what you're looking for, you could check out TCG Player and use my affiliate link to help support the channel. Looking for a way to bling out your deck and not spend a fortune? Alter Sleeves can help with that, and you can help with the channel at the same time by using my affiliate link. Or, if you're looking to join the Goblin Gang, you can always support me through Patreon. Hey gang, just so you should know, Multizone is giving you the chance to win $100 in store credit. All you have to do to enter to win is use my promo code on an eligible order during the time period of February 15th, 2021 to March 1st, 2021, and you'll be entered to win. It's one entry per household, so good luck and have fun. Hey gang, and welcome back. You better buckle up, because this is one of the longest games that I've filmed to date, with today's game being filmed at Wizard's Tower back in 2019. First up, we have Trevor playing the first sliver, and he keeps a mountain, two swamps, Transkilled Promenade, Harmonic Sliver, Soul Ring, and Shifting Sliver. Sam is playing Moldrotha, keeping an Elves of Deep Shadow, Watery Grave, Lanoir Wastes, Noxious Gear Hulk, an Island, and Sakur Tribe Elder. Kyle is playing his Niv Mizzet Payroon deck, keeping Opt, Pestermite, By Force, Steam Vents, Mountain, Island, and Invert slash Invent. Last but not least, Matty is playing his Thassa deck, keeping three islands, Wasteland, Myriad Landscape, Rhystic Study, and an Opt. Sam wins the die roll and starts us off. Sam plays a Llanowar Wastes and casts Elves of Deep Shadow, taking one from the Waste for tapping it for green. Kyle plays an Island. Trevor plays a Swamp and casts Soul Ring. Maddie plays a Snow Covered Island. Sam loses two as he taps mana for the Colony Heart Expedition and then plays a tapped Watery Grave. He gets a counter on the Expedition and at the end of turn, Kyle casts Opt. Kyle draws and plays Ponder. He rearranges his top three, then draws a card. He plays a tap steam vents, and passes turn. Trevor plays a Transguild Promenade, which comes in tapped, and he pays the one to not have to sacrifice it. He then passes to Matty, who at the end of turn, also casts Opt. Matty plays an Island, and casts a Thought Vessel. Sam plays a Drowned Catacombs, getting his second counter on the Expedition. He then pays two for Sakura Tribe Elder, taking one from tapping the Wastes for a green. Kyle untaps and draws. He plays a Mountain for turn and passes to Trevor. Trevor plays a Forest and casts a Kadama's Reach. He goes to find a Basic for the field and one for his hand and passes turn. Maddie pays three mana for Rhystic Study in his main phase, and in response to this, Sam cracks his Sakura Tribe Elder, getting a land from it, which will trigger the Expedition for its last counter. He cracks it at the same time to shortcut, and the study then resolves. Maddie then plays a tap myriad landscape, passing turn. Sam draws and plays a forest. He taps 7, paying the extra for the study cost to cast Moldrotha. Sam then hits Maddie for 1 with the elves, and passes. Kyle plays an evolving wilds, and passes turn. Trevor plays a plains, and now has one of each color mana to cast the first sliver, paying the study cost as well. He cascades into a talon sliver, and still has the one colorless floating from his soul ring to pay for the study cost as well. Matty draws for turn and plays a wasteland. He then pays two to activate the landscape, going to find two of the same basics and pass it to Sam. Sam pays three in his main phase to recast Colony Heart Expedition from his graveyard, plus pays the one for the study tax. He then plays an island for turn. He pays three mana for Sakura Tribe Elder, paying the study tax, and then takes two as he casts Pernicious Deed. He can't pay the one for it, and Matty draws. Matty then taps two mana for Negate, countering the enchantment. In retaliation, Sam moves to combat, hitting Matty with Muldratha, and then passes to Kyle. Kyle cracks his Evolving Wild at the end of turn to go and find an island. Kyle draws and plays a Terramorphic Expanse, passing to Trevor. Trevor plays another Mountain for turn and then taps 3 mana for Harmonic Sliver. 
With the sliver hitting the stack, he doesn't pay the one for the study, letting Maddie draw, and Trevor then cascades. He hits a striking sliver, and since he doesn't have any zero drops, he has to stop cascading and shuffles his library. It then hits the stack, and Maddie draws from that as well. It then enters the field, followed by the harmonic sliver, and with the harmonic sliver entering the battlefield, it blows up Maddie's study. Four mana then gets Trevor an essence sliver, and he cascades again. This time he hits a mana weft sliver, getting to cascade once more. We go super deep this time, cascading until he hits a wayfarer's bobble and casts it. These two slivers then also come in like the harmonic sliver and blow up the thought vessel and colony heart expedition. Trevor then moves to combat and hits Maddie with the first sliver and then passes turn. Maddie draws, plays a snow covered island, and passes. At the end of turn, Sam sacrifices his Sakura Tribe Elder to find a land. Sam draws and plays an Urborg as his land drop. He casts a Plague Crafter, with Kyle and Maddie discarding a card, while Trevor taps his Talon Sliver for mana with the Mana Wef's ability and a land to sacrifice his Bobble. This has him going to go find a land, and he then sacrifices the Talon Sliver. Sam then pays 6 mana for a Masterpiece Noxious Cure Hulk, who enters and takes out the first Sliver. Sam gains 7 life from this, and Trevor puts his commander to the command zone. Sam then moves to combat, hitting Kyle with the Elves of Deep Shadow, and passing. At the end of turn, Kyle cracks his Terramorphic Expanse to find a land. Kyle draws, plays a land, and passes. Trevor untaps, but before leaving upkeep, Maddie casts Time Stop to end the turn. Trevor has no response to this, and we then move to Maddie's turn. Maddie draws and casts a Sapphire Medallion. He then plays a tapped Talamar Depths, rearranging his top three. He casts a Solemn Simulacrum since he's not happy with his three cards on top, and grabs a basic, and then shuffles those cards away. Sam plays his Plague Crafter again in his main phase, and in response to casting it, Kyle casts the Invent half of Invert and Invent to go and find an instant and a sorcery to put to hand. Maddie and Trevor sacrifice a creature, with Maddie drawing a card from the Solemn Dying. While Kyle is searching, Sam then brings back his expedition and his Sakura Tribe Elder. And Kyle reveals evacuation to put to hand. Sam then plays a land for turn, getting a counter on the expedition. Kyle also gets to grab a Whelming Wave and puts it to hand. We then move to combat with Sam hitting Kyle with a Noxious Gear Hulk. And Kyle picks by force to discard to the Plague Crafter trigger. Kyle then realizes Sam couldn't have played the Elder and we put it back to the yard. Kyle plays an island for turn, and just passes. Trevor drops a swamp for turn, after not having his turn abruptly ended. He casts a rampant growth, and then shortcuts out a Fury Sliver, who sadly doesn't cascade into anything without the first sliver out. He does go to combat though, swinging the team at Maddie, and dealing 10 because of double strike. He then passes to go and find a basic with the rampant growth. Maddie plays an island, and casts Heraldic Banner, picking blue as it enters. He then taps enough for Thassa, and passes to Sam. Sam untaps, and draws. He recasts the Plague Crafter, and responding to this, Maddie delves away some of his graveyard to cast Dig Through Time. Once that hits the stack, Kyle decides to jump in on the action once he gains priority, and flashes out a Dualcaster Mage to do the same. Kyle gets his Dig first, and then Maddie resolves his. The Plague Crafter then hits the field, and Maddie discards a card, while Kyle and Trevor sacrifice a creature. Moving to combat, Sam then swings the Gear Hulk and will draw that at Kyle, who take the hit. Who takes the hit. Sam then casts a Ravenous Chupacabra in his second main phase, hitting Trevor's Essence Sliver, and he then passes turn. Kyle taps and draws. He plays an Exotic Orchard for turn, and then counts up the creatures on the board, and taps only two for a Blasphemous Act. Trevor's a bit disappointed by this, but understands it's for the greater good. Kyle then delves away part of his yard for a treasure cruise, and draws three. He then taps a red and a blue for a goblin electromancer, passing. Trevor untaps, and recasts the first sliver. He gets a cascade, and we hit a bone-sized sliver. Once this sliver's resolve, he then casts a scuttle mutt, and passes. Maddie plays a riverwise auger in his main phase, which is basically brainstorm on a body. He puts two cards back, and then plays a snow-covered island. 
He then passes through his phases to his end step and flickers the Riverwise Augur again with Thassa, brainstorming at the end of turn. Sam pays 8 in his main phase to recast Muldrotha. He isn't surprised though when Maddie counters it with an Archmage's Charm, and then just passes turn. Kyle plays a Blighted Cataract as his land drop, and gets some payback on Sam by hitting with the Electromancer before passing to Trevor. Trevor flexes on the table real hard, dropping a Shifting Sliver, a Blur Sliver, and a Spiteful Sliver, and gets some Cascades to resolve. Responding to the Shifting Sliver Cascade, Maddie brainstorms. He draws three and puts two back, and Trevor then Cascades. This has Trevor hitting a Crystalline Sliver, and this gets a Cascade from that. Trevor then reveals a Plated Sliver from that Cascade, and Maddie decides to counter the Crystalline Sliver with a Rewind. The Blur Sliver then resolves its Cascade, with Trevor hitting a Crypt Sliver, and this Cascades once more. He reveals until he hits a Mind Lash Sliver, and then stops Cascading and shuffles because he has no zero targets to hit with this Cascade. We then move to the Spiteful Sliver's Cascade after he's done bottoming the cards, and he goes until he hits a Screeching Sliver, and once more Cascades into nothing since he has no real zero drops. He then bottoms the Cascades, which is everything in a random order. Once they've all resolved, he moves to Combat, and since they're basically just a word soup of abilities right now, with stuff like Haste, Can't Be Blocked by Non-Slivers, and Double Strike. Moving to Combat, the first sliver goes at Kyle, while everything else goes at Sam. Maddie sees this as a chance to buy some goodwill with his opponents and uses Cyclonic Rift to bounce the bone sized sliver back to Trevor's hand. They both then take the hits, with Sam dropping down to 23. Maddie's turn has him drawing and paying 3 for the Magic Mirror, since it's reduced by the medallion and the spells in his graveyard. 6 mana then gets him a Scourge of Fleets, which bounces all creatures with toughness of 8 or less back to his opponent's hands. This clears the board basically, and Maddie then counts up his devotion, and realizes Thassa is active. He goes to combat, and swings at Trevor, who takes the hit. We then move to the end of Maddie's turn, and he blinks the Riverwise again, brainstorming before passing to Sam. Sam draws, and taps all of his mana for a massive villainous wealth, and targets Maddie. He hits a surprising amount of lands, but does get some notable spells, and gets to cast an Aetherflux Reservoir. He then plays a Wayfarer's Bobble, gaining 3 from the Reservoir. He then casts Soul Ring, gaining 4. He then casts a Biden of Thassa, gaining 5, and finally a Scholar of Ages, gaining 6 from casting it. He returns back to hand the villainous wealth as the scholar enters. Sam then cracks the bobble, finding another basic for the field, and giving his expedition another counter before passing turn. At the end of turn, Kyle sacrifices his blighted cataract to draw some cards. Kyle draws for turn and plays a mountain. He recasts the goblin electromancer, and then the pestermite, tapping down the scholar on Sam's side. Kyle then just passes. Trevor recasts the first sliver, and cascades only one card deep to hit a Cloud Treader sliver. We then see a Bone Size sliver, who cascades into a Hibernation sliver, and once more, he doesn't cascade any lower. Scuttlemutt then rejoins the party, and Trevor goes to combat. He hits Sam with his team, knocking Sam down to 14, and Trevor passes. Maddie puts a Knowledge Counter on his mirror, and then draws from it, and then for turn. He plays a Tectonic Edge, and passes, flickering the Scourge with Thassa, and bouncing all of his opponent's creatures back to hand. Sam draws return, and then taps out again to cast a Villainous Wealth, this time targeting Trevor. Kyle isn't too keen on this, and rewinds the spell instead. He then passes, and at the end of turn, Kyle recasts his Pestermite, and as it enters, taps down Maddie's banner. Kyle untaps and recasts the Goblin Electromancer. He then passes turn, with Maddie activating his Wasteland at the end of turn to take out Trevor's Transguild Promenade, which is his only source of blue. Trevor draws and plays a Plains. He recasts the Cloud Treader Sliver and then plays out a Bone Scythe Sliver. With the Bone Scythe on the stack, once he gains priority, Maddie flashes out Torrential Gear Hulk to cast from his yard Archmage's Charm without paying the cost. He picks the mode to counter the spell. Trevor then moves to cast a Crypt Sliver once that's finished, 
followed by his plated sliver, and then finishes with a scuttle mutt. Maddie puts another counter onto his mirror, drawing two, and then for turn. Six mana then gets him a reduced costing Scholar of the Ages, who enters, and targets the Cyclonic Rift and the Rewind, and with no interruptions, the ability puts both back to his hand. At the end of turn, Maddie flickers the Scourge again with Thassa to keep his opponents off of creatures. Sam untaps and draws. He casts Solemn Simulacrum, gaining one life from the Reservoir, and before he puts his deck down, also cracks his Expedition, because it'll get the third counter needed from the Solemn. Sam then casts his Reclamation Sage, gaining two from the Reservoir, and as it enters, blows up Maddie's Mirror. Sam's not finished with his turn though, casting an Acidic Slime, gaining three life, and as it enters, hits one of Trevor's Plains. Sam then passes, and at the end of turn, Kyle casts a Blue Sun Zenith, where X is five, but Maddie counters it with Rewind. Kyle's turn is super quick, with him drawing and replaying the Goblin Electromancer before passing to Trevor. Trevor draws and discusses with the table how to get out from Maddie's soft lock with the Scourge and Thassa. He then recasts the Cloud Shredder, and then realizes the Scuttle Mutt should be back in his hand. He plays a Plated Sliver, and then a Mind Lash Sliver. We then see the Crip Sliver, and finally the Blur Sliver to give the team haste. He goes to combat, swinging the team at Maddie, but Maddie responds before damage, casting Cyclonic Rift overloaded. This has the upside of Maddie getting back some of the cards that Stam had stolen, and he returns the Aetherflux Reservoir and Stolen Soul Ring to his hand. Trevor then has to pass, discarding down to 7. Maddie untaps and draws for turn. He casts his Soul Ring, and then in the Aetherflux Reservoir that Sam was nice enough to return to his hand. Maddie then casts a Biden of Thassa, gaining 3 from the Reservoir, and then Thassa's Oracle, gaining 4. With it entering, he has a ton of devotion and looks at that many top cards, keeping one of them. Moving to combat, Maddie swings 8 at Trevor, Thassa and the Scholar at Kyle, and the Torrential Gear Hulk at Sam. Before damage though, Kyle uses Rapid Hybridization to take out the Scholar. Creatures then connect, and Maddie draws 4 from the Biden triggers. Maddie then moves to his end step and targets the River Rise again, brainstorming and then passing to Sam. Sam untaps his massive amounts of lands and draws. He plays Muldratha again and then casts Plaguecrafter again. People either discard or sacrifice a creature, and Sam then casts out his expedition and passes turn. At the end of turn, Kyle flashes out Pestermite. He targets one of Maddie's lands to tap it down, and Maddie responds tapping it to use a tectonic edge and blows up Kyle's steam vents. Kyle untaps and draws for turn. He plays an island and then brings out Niv Mizzet Perun. He then casts a Whelming Wave and gets a trigger from Niv Mizzet to draw a card. This has Kyle drawing and Niv Mizzet triggers again, dealing one to Maddie. They then bounce their boards of creatures and the Scourge gets to stick around because it actually has a relevant creature type for once. Kyle then passes and wishes Trevor good luck. Trevor plays an Evolving Wilds for turn and casts his Cloud Shredder. He then drops a Scuttle Mutt, but it's disallowed by Maddie, who gains one life from the Aetherflux Reservoir trigger. Trevor then plays out Soul Ring and taps enough to cast his Crypt Sliver. He goes to combat, hitting Maddie for two, and passes. Maddie untaps and draws. He recasts Thass in his main phase, gaining one life. We then see the Riverwise hitting the stack, gaining him two more life, and then brainstorming as it enters. Thassa's Oracle comes back again, gaining him a 3, and he resolves that trigger, looking at his top 7 and drawing one of them. Maddie then goes to combat, and swings the Scourge at Trevor, dealing 6. He then passes, and flickers the Riverwise again at the end of turn, and then has to discard down to 7. Sam pays only 6 for Muldratha to cast it from his hand, and then plays Pernicious Deed from his yard. Maddie counters this by flashing out Torrential Gear Hulk, and then targeting the Rewind to cast it for free. He gets to untap some lands because of this, and Sam then casts a Noxious Gear Hulk from his yard. With it hitting the stack, Maddie's feeling a bit threatened, and rightly so, so he counters the creature with a counter spell. Sam then plays a Glacial Chasm, sacrificing a land, and passing a Kyle. Kyle untaps and draws. He then just passes. 
Trevor's upkeep has Kyle flashing back out the same pestermite we've been seeing, and as it enters, he taps down one of Maddie's lands. Trevor then moves to his main phase, and he casts a Gemhide Sliver. This gives him access to blue finally, and we then see the triumphant return of the first Sliver. He cascades into a homing Sliver, and once that's resolved, Trevor then Sliver cycles a plated Sliver, and goes into his library to find another Sliver to put to hand. He reveals a Ward Sliver, and casts it, cascading once he's done shuffling. He hits a Venom Sliver, and as the Ward comes in, names Blue. Moving to combat, Trevor hits Maddie with the first Sliver for 7 commander damage. He then passes, and at the end of turn, Kyle overloads his copy of Cyclonic Rift. Maddie draws for turn, and recasts his Soul Ring. He plays a Maze of Ith, and then casts Sapphire Medallion once more. He then casts the Aether Flux Reservoir, and recasts his Heraldic Banner again, naming Blue and gaining 4 life from the Reservoir. He then plays out Adventure's Journal, gaining 5 more life, and Maddie passes. Sam untaps and pays 2 life to the cumulative upkeep cost of his Glacial Chasm. He taps enough, including the Chasm, because he has Urborg out to recast Muldratha again. He then recasts Reclamation Sage, who enters and blows up the Reservoir. Sam then plays Secrets of the Dead, and he casts a Sakura Tribe Elder from his graveyard, drawing from the Secrets trigger. We then see a Deathrite Shaman, and Sam passes turn. Kyle plays a tap Swiftwater Cliffs, gaining one life as enters. He then recasts the color intensive Niv Mizzet Pay Ruin and goes to combat. He hits Maddie for two with the Pestermite and passes. Trevor draws and recasts the Cloud Treader Sliver, followed by the Gem Hide. He then drops the first Sliver once more and cascades into a Quilled Sliver, and the first Sliver then resolves. Three mana is tapped, including a Sliver, to use the Gem Hide Sliver's granted ability to cast a Lava Belly Sliver. This cascades into a Sinew Sliver, which enters first. The Lava Belly then enters, and he deals one to Maddie and gains one life. Moving to combat, Trevor swings the first Sliver at Maddie, but before moving to damage, Maddie uses his Maze of Ith to untap the first Sliver, and Trevor then passes turn. Maddie untaps, and on his upkeep, gains 10 life from Venter's Journal. He then moves to his main phase, and casts a Nyx Lotus, which comes in tapped. Thassa then joins the party once more, followed by the Scourge of Fleets. Before it hits the field though, Kyle delves away part of his graveyard to counter the spell with Logic Knot, which Maddie can't pay the extra for. This has Kyle also drawing a card from niv and he deals one to the Reclamation Sage. The spell then gets countered, and Maddie then casts his Thassa's Oracle. He looks at his top three cards, and keeps one of them from its ability. Maddie then passes, flickering the Oracle at the end of turn, and doing it again. Sam untaps, and lets his Chasm go to the yard. He then draws for turn, and replays it in his main phase, sacrificing a land as it enters. Six mana then gets him back his Gear Hulk from the yard, drawing him a card from the Secrets. Sam blows up niv Mizzet as it enters, and gains five life. He then casts Solemn Simulacrum, and goes to find a tap basic. He finds the last one in his deck, and puts out a tap forest. Sam then plays an Underrealm Lich, and he casts Elves of Deep Shadow for his turn, losing one from tapping the Lanoir Waste for a green. His draw is replaced by the Lich trigger, and he keeps one of his top three bidding the other two. Kyle draws, casts a Soul Ring, and brings back his commander before passing to Trevor. Trevor untaps and draws. He recasts the Homing Sliver and cascades. He hits a Predatory Sliver and puts it to the field. Trevor then plays out a Sentinel Sliver and then recasts his Word Sliver, cascading to a Cultivate. This lets Kyle draw a card with Nimizit and he deals one to the Elves of the Deep Shadow. Ward Sliver then enters and Trevor picks blue again. Trevor then plays the land he found for his hand as his land for turn, and casts a Soul Ring. He then Sliver cycles the Crypt Sliver, and goes to find a new one. He also realizes he had four Lava Belly Sliver triggers, and he deals them all to Maddie, gaining four. Trevor then finishes his search, and he casts a Synapse Sliver. He goes once more at Maddie with everything, and Maddie uses the Maze to take out the first Sliver from combat, but still takes 21. 
Trevor then gets to draw five cards from the Synapse Sliver, triggering from his Slivers Connecting, much like the Biden of Thassa does, and he then passes to Maddie. Maddie untaps and gains ten more life on his upkeep from the Journal Trigger. He recasts his Riverwise Augur, and then the Palancron. With the Illusionary Flyer entering, he untaps seven lands. Maddie then plays a Conjurer's Closet, and delves away part of his yard to cast Treasure Cruise. This lets Kyle draw a card, and deal one with Nimvisit. He hits Sam's Deathrite Shaman for the one. Maddie then draws three cards, and we see a copy of Mirror Maid come into play, and it enters as a copy of the closet. Maddie then plays out Ponder, and Kyle draws a card, and deals the final one needed to take out the Deathrite Shaman. With the trigger targeting it though, Sam uses the Deathrite to exile land from Maddie's yard. Not done drawing for turn though, Maddie then casts Drawn from Dreams, and looks at his top 7 cards to keep 2. Kyle also gets to draw another card from Niv Mizzet, and deals 1 to Maddie. Once everything's done resolving, Maddie then taps his Nyx Lotus for 8 blue, and uses some of it for flow of ideas to draw even more. Kyle draws again from Niv Mizzet, and deals 1 to Maddie, and Maddie then draws 10 cards. Spark Double then comes in after he taps some lands, and it enters as a copy of Thassa. We then move to Maddie's end step, and he gets some end of turn triggers from his multiple closets and Thassas. He has enough triggers to bounce four creatures, and he resolves the one targeting the Oracle first. It re-enters, and he goes seven cards deep into his library, keeping one. Maddie then has his Thassa blinking the spark double, which comes back in as a copy of Palancron, and untaps seven lands. He then resolves the target on the Palancron, and as it re-enters, Untap seven more lands. We then resolve the Riverwise, and he brainstorms before passing to Sam. Sam untaps, and sacrifices his Glacial Chasm to not pay the upkeep cost. In his main phase, he casts the Gitrog Monster, and then replays the Glacial Chasm from his yard, which has him sacrificing the land as it comes in. The Gitrog Monster sees this, and is pleased, allowing Sam to draw a card. This is replaced by the Lich's ability, letting him look at his top 3, keep 1, and bin 2. Sam then plays a Ghost Quarter, since the Gitrog allows him to play an extra land for turn. Ravenous Chupacabra then comes back, letting Sam draw from the Secrets, and then as it enters, blows up the Ward Sliver. He then drops Seal of Doom from his hand, and sacrifices it to try and destroy the Oracle. Maddie responds once he gains priority, and uses Tail's End to counter the activated ability. This lets Kyle draw a card, and deal one to Maddie. Sam then recasts the seal from his graveyard, drawing a card from the secrets. Maddie then flashes back out his Torrential Gear Hulk from hand, and he casts Negate from his yard without paying the cost to counter the enchantment. This has Kyle draw yet another card, and deals one to Muldratha. Sam then draws a card from the secrets trigger, and he passes turn. At the end of turn, Kyle casts an Impulse. He gets a trigger from Niv Mizzet, drawing a card, and dealing one to Thassa's Oracle. Kyle then resolves the Impulse, and once that's done, pays a blue and a red to cast Is It Charm, picking the mode to draw two and discard two. He gets a Niv Mizzet trigger, and once Maddie gains priority, he gets a ruling from a card he has in his hand. Once he's back, Maddie decides instead to cast a Cryptic Command, picking the modes of countering the spell and returning the oracle to hand. Kyle then gets to draw a card from the command, and deals one to Maddie, since the oracle will be off the board either way, and he's fine with the result. The Is It Charm is then countered as well. Kyle untaps, and draws for turn, and deals one to a sliver. He casts Faithless Looting in his main phase, getting a Niv Mizzet draw trigger, and dealing one to the same sliver. He then draws two, and discards two, dealing the rest to the sliver, and one to the Riverwise. We then see Preordain, with Kyle getting another draw trigger from Niv Mizzet, and then deals one to the Riverwise. He scries two, bottoms both, draws a card, and deals one to the Lich on Sam's side of the board. He then taps one red, casting Gamble, and drawing a card from Niv Mizzet, and dealing one to Maddie. He then goes to find a card to put to hand, and once he settles on something, has to discard a card at random. It's a talisman of creativity after Maddie and Trevor weigh in on which card to pick, and once that's done, 
Kyle pays enough to cast a Vandal Blast and targets the journal. He gets a niv mizzet trigger, and Maddie responds with it on the stack. He casts an Insidious Will and changes the target of it to Kyle's Soul Ring. Kyle gets a draw from this as well and deals one to Maddie. He then floats two colorless and the Soul Ring is destroyed. He then draws from the original trigger from Vandal Blast and deals the one to Sam. Kyle then uses a Chaos Warp and targets the Glacial Chasm, shuffling it into Sam's library, drawing a card from niv mizzet and dealing one to Maddie. Sam shuffles up and reveals off the top a Reliquary Tower, which goes to Field. Four mana then gets Kyle's Splinter Twin, which he puts onto the Resilient Pestermite. He now has the Twin Combo active, and once everyone admits they're out of answers, they all concede the game to Kyle. Game review time. So I think I put so much effort and time into this video that it's actually become a horror crux for me. This is probably my top five longest games, and it is certainly the longest game I've ever edited. There was so much going on and so many good responses that I think by the end of it, everyone was just so tired that they were starting to see enemies everywhere. I know in Maddie's case, he started throwing out a ton of counter spells in fear of basically having his stuff taken away. I think unfortunately for him, the weakest choice in this game for him to use a spell on was on the Vandal Blast. I actually don't even know if he could have used Insidious Will to change the target of Vandal Blast to Kyle's Soul Ring, and it is easy for me to say because I have hindsight in the video footage, but I probably would have saved the Insidious Will for Splinter Twin and put it onto something like my Palancron. Other than that, I think every deck performed pretty well. Kyle drew a bunch of cards and pinged people into Mizzet. Sam got to reanimate stuff from his graveyard. Trevor cast slivers and got more slivers and then cast the first sliver again and got more slivers and just kept doing that over and over again. And Maddie showed just how powerful a mono blue control deck can be. Please be sure to tune in every Monday and Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for a guaranteed new video. You can also follow me on Twitter at MTG Mudsta. You can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash mtgmudsta. And lastly, you can check me out when I stream at twitch.tv slash mtgmudsta. This video is brought to you in support by my patrons. If you're looking for a way to help out the channel, please be sure to visit the link below. Thank you all for watching this video, and don't forget, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.